Hey guys, welcome to the next video and another question. So the question today I have for you is let f be a real function that it is from r to r. Let it be a continuous function and a one-one function as well. Then which of the following is true? Number one, f should be on to, f is on to. Number b, uh, f is either strictly decreasing or strictly increasing. C, there exists an x belonging to R such that fx will always be equal to 1. F is unbounded. So which option do you think is true? You should pause and try to think yourself. Uh, therein, I would expect you to think of certain examples to counter yourself. If you have already thought about it and you're back, so let's talk about these options which of these will be which of the option will be the best option to choose so let me take up option a which is f is on to now f is a real function it is continuous and one one so if you have to think of any counter example you will have to take the hypothesis to be true. So that is, you have to take a real function which is continuous and one one, but is probably not on to. What kind of a function do you think? What function will, will be like that? If you take fx to be e to the power x, this function is continuous. Definitely continuous, right? It's exponential. It is 1, 1 as well because it's strictly increasing. It's a strictly increasing function, hence it's 1 to 1, right? But is it on to? Well, no. Not on to in R because the range is not equal to the codomain. This time codomain was given to you in this question, right? So range is not equal to the codomain. Codomain is R, but range is definitely R plus, right? Range is R plus or R plus plus? What would be your answer? Can e to the power x be zero ever? No, e to the power x is strictly greater than 0. So the range is R plus plus. Okay. It's from 0 to infinity. Open 0 to infinity. Now, so that means it's not on to. So we have an example here of a function which is satisfying the condition that it's continuous and 1, 1, but it's not on to. So A option is not correct. Let's take a C option. So in the C option, they're saying that there exists an x belonging to R such that fx is equal to 1. For at least one x, I must have fx equal to 1. Okay. The function again should be continuous and 1, 1. It should be, con that's the, that's your base hypothesis, right? So condition of continuity and 1 to 1 should be satisfied. Whatever example you take. So let's take fx as 1 plus e to the power x. It'll be easy for you to think because, you know, you've already just thought about e to the power x. Now, 1 plus e to the power x, which will strictly be greater than 1, always. It is strictly greater than 1 because e to the power x is strictly greater than 0. So this is strictly greater than 1. So therefore... There does not exist any x in R such that fx is equal to 1. So you have an example of a continuous function and a 1 to 1 function. This is still 1 to 1. This is continuous and 1 to 1 because it's strictly increasing. But it doesn't have any uh, x input which can give you 1, right? For this function, no input can give you 1. Let's now take option F. Well, option D, sorry. Let's take option D, which is F is unbounded. 
So let's take uh, our hypothesis is f has to be r to r. It has to be continuous and 1, 1. So f needs to be continuous and 1, 1. And we need to think of an example. We need to think of an example which is perhaps not bounded. So what this option is saying, what, what this option is basically telling you is that in if you know it's a continuous and one-to-one -one function, then it will always be unbounded. Of course, it's not true. How 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 can it always be unbounded? You can have so many examples. For example, let's take fx as tan inverse x, that is arc tan. Okay. So if I take tan inverse x as a function. The domain of tan inverse x is minus infinity to infinity. Okay. And the range of tan inverse x, range of tan inverse x is minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. Since the range of f is minus pi by 2 to pi by 2, that means it's bounded. So hence, it's a counter example to the option saying that f needs to be unbounded. I have a bounded function, which is continuous in R and is one to one. It is a one to one function. It is a one to one function and continuous function. Because for every distinct value of x, you will get a distinct value of fx. Different value of x's will give you different value of fx is okay and the range is minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 so it's a continuous and one-to-one -one function but it is bounded so this option goes off so what has just happened with us is that option a is not true option c is not true option d is not true so by that by by eliminating these we are left with b option which is saying f is either increasing strictly or decreasing either strictly increasing or strictly decreasing okay so what do we have we have f is continuous and f is one to one so since f is one to one this means that x1 not equal to x2 should imply fx1 is not equal to fx2 so, and it's a continuous function, you can't have any break. If I create, this is your x-axis and this is your y-axis. So, all we are trying to say is that, you know, f, it could be anywhere, any quadrant, okay? This is just to show you, this is just an example. So I, it's not particularly that I have to only take positive or negative. So all I'm trying to tell you is that different inputs will fetch you different outputs. So that means if output is this here, then for this value, it is something else. If output is this here, it is something else. It has to be different. It has to be different. And since you need to have continuity, so since distinct inputs will give you distinct outputs, it will it should either the function should be strictly decreasing or strictly increasing. See, if you have in your mind that, okay, for distinct values, why can't I have like the function going down and then coming up here again? Because if that will happen, then because you have a continuous function, you don't have any break here. Okay, if you don't have any break here, if it goes up here, then there will definitely be points which are giving you the same value. Which are giving you the same value and then your function will not remain one to one. For one to one, distinct inputs should be giving you distinct outputs. Okay, that is important. For one to one, distinct inputs should be giving you distinct outputs and that's only possible in case your function is either it is decreasing like this or distinct inputs are giving you distinct outputs like this. So, 
probably going up like this. Okay. It could go up like this. But it can't so happen that it is first increasing and then decreasing. It will be either strictly increasing or strictly decreasing. That's that's the only thing that can happen in case you have a continuous function and it is one-to-one -one as well. So always remember this. If a function is continuous in R and one-to-one -one in R, it will be either increasing or decreasing. This is another way of putting it uh, in terms of a question. And with this question, I also wanted you guys to think in terms of counter examples if you ever have to create to eliminate options. Some of you must have actually just seen the options and probably easily figured out that, yes, this should be the correct answer because maybe a couple of options were very easy to, you know, get away with. But nonetheless, uh, it's the entire process which is important and why I am creating these questions for you. I hope this helps. Thank you.